Ms. White, I would like to continue our conversation, if you don't mind, and talk about the Sabbath day. Well, sure, Ben Golly, you know that is my favorite subject. Well, you know, Miss White, if I understand it, you didn't observe, actually observed the Sabbath until about 1846. You came from a Methodist background and didn't think the Sabbath day was that important to observe, did you? Well, that's right, Ben Golly, I did come from a Methodist background, all right. And I didn't think much of the Sabbath until 1846. And even after the failed prophetic chart, oh, excuse me, uh, the Miller chart, that is, I can't say it's failed, Ben Golly, people think I'm a false prophet. Well, I understand, Miss White. But see, after that chart, and that was in 1844, even two years after that, I didn't really think much of the Sabbath at all. Uh, in fact, Ben Golly, if you will go read my book, Testimonies, if you look down on page 76 and 77, you will see why I said this, and I quote, In the autumn of 1846, we began to observe the Bible Sabbath and to teach and to defend it. My action was first called to the Sabbath while I was on visit to New Bedford, Massachusetts early in the same year. I there became acquainted with elderly James Bates, who had earlier embraced the Advent movement and was active in laboring for its cause. Elder B. was keeping the Sabbath and urged its importance. I did not feel it was important and thought that Elderly B. erred in dwelling upon the fourth commandment more than the other nine. So you think that it was too much of trouble to follow the Sabbath command itself and not even think about the other nine? That's right, Ben Galley. I just thought, you know, why focus on one commandment so much when you got the other nine that you got to follow too? You just can't focus on one of them. You've got to follow all of them. You know, you start focusing on one, you get your attention off what God really means. So then, from the time of the chart in 1844 until 1846, and even actually prior to that, you didn't think much of observing the Sabbath. Not at all, Ben Golly. I didn't think it was that important. Well, Miss White, let me ask you this then. What changed your mind about this? That's a good question, Ben Golly. You see, I had me a vision. Yeah, you did? Well, yeah. You know, they, they carried me in the back room and talked to me a little bit about the Sabbath. In fact, let me go ahead and finish quoting my what I said uh, in testimonies on page 76 and 77. And again, I quote, But the Lord gave me the view of the heavenly sanctuary. The temple of God was opened in heaven. And I saw the ark of God covered with the mercy seat. Two angels stood, one at each end of the ark, with their wings spread over the mercy seat, and their faces turned upward. My competent angel informed me that these represented all the heavenly hosts looking at the reverently awed toward the holy law, which was written by the finger of God. Jesus raised the cover of the ark, and I beheld the table of stones which the Ten Commandments were written. I was amazed that I saw the Fourth Commandment in the very center of the Ten Precepts, with a soft halo of light encircling it. Said the angel, It is the only one of the Ten which defines the living God. End quote. Now, Ben got it. That's in Testimonies, page 76 through 77. So you had a vision about this then, huh? Well, yeah, Ben Golly, you know them Old Testament prophets? Well, them guys only had like three or four visions. I had me 2,000 visions at least. Yep, so I guess I'm about, what, 200 times better than they are? Yeah, they only had three or four visions, Ben Golly. But me, I had me about 2,000 visions. So was this a vision of convenience? Or they just talk you into this? Well, you know that elderly bee, he pretty persuades us. And if they need a vision, well, I'll give them a vision. So I had me a vision, and I saw what a ten com in the Ten Commandments that the Fourth Commandment, as I said over there in the Great Controversy, the Fourth Commandment was the greatest of all the commandments. Miss White, do you know that really contradicts what Jesus said in his word? Because he said the greatest commandment was to love God. He said that. That's exactly what Jesus said, and all Christians know that, Miss White. Jesus didn't say the fourth commandment was the greatest commandment. He said that the greatest commandment was to love God. 
glad you know that Jesus. That's why God gave him that power, I guess. That's why God didn't give him anything. We talked about that in our last debate. You can't give to Jesus what he already had. Well, that's what you say, Ben Gali. So you're saying that uh, loving God is not important? Well, I didn't say it wasn't important. I just said it wasn't that important. Because the greatest commandment of all is observing the Sabbath day. So you're saying then that the observ observation of the Sabbath is more important than loving God? Well, well, Miss White, let me remind you of something else. He said the second greatest commandment was like this, to love thy neighbor as thyself. So you're saying that the observation of Sabbath of the Sabbath is more important than loving God and more important than loving your neighbor. Well, thank God, if that's what I said, that's what I mean. And if I had to contradict the Bible here and now, you know that. You know, that's, that's the vision God gave me. So God tells all other Christians in the entire world that the greatest commandment is to love God, and the second one is likewise to love thy neighbor as thyself. And you want to contradict the word of God and say the greatest commandment is the Sabbath command. Ben Golly, I was shown that the true Sabbath was always kept. And that if it had been kept, we wouldn't have had all these infidels and atheists in the world today. What do you mean, Miss White, that the Sabbath was always kept? You know, back there in the Garden of Eden, you know, they had the Ten Commandments too. They did? Sure, Ben Golly, don't you know the Bible? Well, yes, Miss White, I do know the Bible, but I've never seen any Ten Commandments in the book of Genesis anywhere. In fact, that answer me this, Miss White. Who did Adam and Eve have a mother and father? I well, know, Ben Gali, they didn't. How would the Tenth Commandment apply to them to honor thy father and mother then? Well, you got me there, Ben Gali. Well, answer me this, Miss White. Adam and Eve were the only two in the Garden of Eden? That's right, you got that right. Then, what would it matter about committing adultery? If there was only those two who they were going to commit adultery with? <laughs> ben Gali, you're a slick one now. You got me on that one too. Uh, I got you on all of them, Miss White, because the Ten Commandments were never given to Adam and Eve. They were given at Mount Sinai to the people of Israel as a sign of their release from Egyptian bondage. Well, there you go, Ben Golly, quoting the Bible again. I wish you'd stop quoting that Bible. Every time it seems like you quote that Bible, you contradict me. Well, thank you for this discussion, Miss White. And our next topic, I would like to discuss uh, God having feathers and wings so I look forward to that dis discussion and see if you really believe God has feathers and wings thank you Miss White and God bless